So I wanted to talk to you guys about kind of what I've been doing and uh, what I got going on in the winter. So for Halloween, I was pretty much just trying to get the yard done with just some fun Halloween stuff and, and learn how to use a chainsaw. Like it takes a lot of practice to get any good and I am still a very, very beginner. Uh, I have improved my setup and I'll show you a little bit. I got a little wood shop and uh, some stuff I've discovered maybe to help you guys that are thinking about getting into chainsaw carving. Uh, again, I learned almost everything I knew from uh, Jordy Johnson. You can check out his page at Carving Fusion. But I'll, I'll show you what I got going on. Because this is taller than I usually do, I'm just doing a straight tree. And I'm kind of just playing with the lines to see where I like it. Normally you stand these up and you start from the bottom because once you cut this, it's really hard for your jaw horse to, to grab a little tip. So I'm actually going to lay this on its side and do one side and flip it over and do the other side. We'll see how this goes. I'm using a steel, what is this, the MSA 60? Yeah, 60C. It's an electric chainsaw. All I use is electric. So I really like this. I got the Canon carved blade on here, 12 inch. Uh, this is a surprisingly good saw, like it can do a lot. So that kind of worked pretty good. First cuts are done. So I've got the the rocks done and the, I guess the stump done. And underneath the, uh, it's a good time to get this while you have access to it. Get underneath the bottom there and now I can flip it, I can grab that part and work on the rest. Okay, so there's the rough out. I try to do as much as possible with the chainsaw to teach myself to get better with the chainsaw. I think this came out pretty good. Um, going to burn it, just to get rid of all the fuzzies. Give it a quick sand and I think I'm done with it, really. I think I, you know, usually I do the ones, the trees that like curve into the wind but this was so tall that I didn't have enough board like I need a really wide board to do that uh, so it's a straight one and I have to say I think I like how it turned out I forgot to sign my piece so I had to put that in and then when I get around the back I realized uh, I need to round that trunk a little better so I'm glad I did so I burnt the top of it and now I'm gonna get in there and sand it and I'm gonna use a combination of let's see this oscillator Oscillator sander from Porter Cable. I like Porter Cable. I've had them forever. And a drill with... You can buy these little flap wheels on Amazon. It's probably take a while, so I'll be back. So this is how it came out after a lot of sanding. Uh, the sanding took longer than... You know, it always takes too damn long. Uh, but I think it looks cool. So I'm going to have to get a thicker cookie. I'll have to sand down and make some more cookies. A, a thicker one because... Uh, once I go up to three feet, it's a little top heavy. So we'll, uh, I guess I'll get that done. So I got some white pine delivered because I just didn't have big logs around and I have a very small yard. So this is about um, what I had to do to store these things. I had to uh, kind of just stand them up and walk them around. By the way, I, I got a, I finally got a hand truck. Totally worth it. Love it. Um, and that allowed me to set up this little rig here where I can, uh, I'm going to carve some cookies today. And I'll show you what I'm doing with these cookies. If you don't know what a cookie is, that's like a, uh, a round cut. It's, it's like a disc cut. Uh, I still have some Halloween stuff i got to put away and change over to Christmas soon. I'm kind of waiting until Thanksgiving. I guess I should do better. So, this is my workshop. It's basically a plastic shed. Get an idea, but it's, it's really good. I finally have a place of my own where I can get it super dirty and dusty and it's not a big deal. So I am working on Christmas trees right now. And these are made from hemlock. And they trying some different ideas. These are all chainsawed. Um, this thin one here was just a board I rescued from the dump. I don't know what kind of wood it is. You can see it's the color is way different. Uh, but these are all hemlock. I haven't treated them. All I've done is burn them and sand them. And some people like that. They don't want any products. Like an indoor product, you don't really need to do anything else than this. 
I'm going to decorate these and what I'm using the cookies for is I'm going to set these on a cookie like a half cookie and put a uh, little candle on them and I think they'll sell more because there'll be a place for a candle and I will show you that when I'm done but going to uh, get started today anyway I, I'm entering a, a couple little festivals around me. I, um, I have almost no inventory made. So I'm just going to make a few higher dollar trees and maybe just a few little ornaments or something. And I'm doing it more for fun um, just to see if, I, if there's a market for this here. I have no idea. You know, I made a bunch of trees down south and I couldn't sell them. I, although I didn't really spend the money I needed to to get into places. And I'm not on Facebook because I just hate Facebook. Um, so I'm not on Facebook Marketplace. So I'm, it's pretty much word of mouth in YouTube and in uh, craft shows. So anyway, I'm, uh, I'm starting these up and we'll see what happens here. So I've been making some cookies here. I figured I'd make a couple extra while the weather's good before uh, winter really hits. And you can get a good idea, like if you never made cookies, it's nice to have the log raised so you don't kill your back. But the other thing is, you know, you don't drive your blade into the dirt because some reason you can cut through really hard wood, but if you hit dirt with a blade, it's like instantly dull. It's ridiculous. So these are the cookies and look how nice and thin and uh, how, they, how well they came out. I mean, this looks like you ran them, you bought them from a lumber mill that cut them or something. And the way I get that, because remember, I'm still a beginner chainsaw guy, but here's how I did it. I freehanded this with this electric, um, there's a Greenworks 80 volt, and this is their 18 inch Pro. But I attached a level, and what you do is you just keep that little bubble in the middle while you cut these. Like you line it up when you start a little bit, eyeball it. And then don't watch the blade, just watch the bubble. Because the bar's bent, so you have a tendency to pull while you're doing it. Subconsciously, you just don't know you're doing it. And man, this made all my cuts awesome. Like, that's professional. I mean, that's I'm really impressed with myself right now, and it's all because of this level. So it's a really good $2 upgrade. I hope that helps you beginner carvers. Oh, and if you're new to my channel, I only carve with electric. Uh, I don't use gas because I just don't like gas. They're a pain in the butt. So the electric, I will say the 80 volt Greenworks is my go-to for blocking out. But this thing eats batteries. you got to have an extra battery. They charge really fast. But if you're thinking about going over to electric full time so you could like, I don't know, maybe work inside in the winter without gassing yourself out. The noise is a lot less. The It just starts. You don't have to fight it and cling filters and all that kind of junk and carburetors. I, I really like working with electric. So now I've cut the cookies in half and you'll see how I attach them with the trees. Um, now they are wet. These are pretty new cut so I'm gonna have to burn and sand these to get kind of the the wetness out. And um, since I don't have a table saw this is how I'm doing it. I clamp it into this jaw horse and you just cut across the line you made. And if you've never had a jaw horse, it's like a big clamp vise thing. And I put wood here so I don't accidentally hit the metal with my chainsaw. You can kind of see how that setup works. And that makes it, um, gets the job done. So when you guys are starting out, remember, you can do a lot with just a chainsaw. You don't need all the table saws and everything else. There's another thing I wanted to show you is I'm starting to hit a part of a log it has these big, uh, I guess they're like sap seams or something. And um, what will happen is as this log dries out, <coughs> it actually shrinks towards the middle. And it will, since it gets smaller and you have to figure out well, how does it get smaller, where does it go, it'll actually open up the edges and crack it. So by cutting, I try to cut the worst part out. I go through the pith, the middle here. That's where all the pressure is when it shrinks. So if you cut the middle, like with your line, go through it, it relieves a lot of that pressure. Uh, you can see it better here. So there's the, the pith. And what'll happen is as this dries and shortens, 
hopefully the pressure will go towards the, the edge where I've cut it and um, it won't crack. That's the hope. Let me give you some tips on burning wood. Uh, firstly, you want to do it obviously in a sand pit or gravel or something or sidewalk, something that doesn't catch. Unfortunately, it's fall here. So these leaves are everywhere, so I, I blow it away. Um, I actually had a leaf fire get completely out of hand, and I keep a, a safety bucket of water. So always have water around, and I even keep one of those blankets, those fire blankets, and uh, it gets, like when it's this dry, it goes so fast. It's ridiculous. Anyway, I'm going to burn it with one of these propane torches. They're called, uh, I, I mean... Big things, Tiger Torch, but Flame King, something like that. Maybe I'll show you how it works. One other thing is, you know, you're going to be creating a lot of smoke. So wear some sort of mask. I wear this trend mask. I love it. It has like air fan circulation that uh, it's really pretty pricey. But man, it's made my carving so much more bearable. Anyway, so make sure you wear a mask and you don't inhale this stuff. A little lesson about wood here. Um, you see how all these have a white ring after I burn them? That is the sap wood. And it's, you know, plants have xylem that go up and down the bark. It's kind of like where all the nutrients come up. So they're full of sap and they're much harder to burn. If you were to sit for a really long time, you can try to dry them out and get them dry. I'm hoping I burnt enough that it's not sticky when you touch it. If it is, then I will just have to clear coat these. But I'm going to sand them and hopefully I fried enough on the surface that that takes a lot of the sap out. And I'll probably just tell people, you know, it's going to be sappy for a few months. It'll dry out eventually. One other quick thing I'll mention is if you're going to be doing firework, um, I have a bucket of water and I have a fire blanket. These are the glass blankets you throw on like kitchen fires and stuff. I had a situation where even though I get this place prepped, it's not perfect. And like a leaf blew in, caught on fire, landed in a pile, and it went bananas. Within 10 seconds, there was just a line of fire. 30 seconds, there was a pile of fire, and I had thrown the whole water bucket on it. And luckily, I had just gotten this blanket, and I had put it in my little workshop. And uh, I grabbed it and threw it on the fire, and it worked. But it does scorch the blanket pretty good. These things are made of glass. They're not real fiber. So if you touch it, make sure you have a glove on. But uh, it was worth the money. I, I, I really like these things. Uh, it probably saved the whole hill from going up on fire. So have a plan A and a plan B on fire protection. I'm really glad I did. So I'm sanding these back up. And the whole reason I pretty much burned them is because they were so wet. It helped dry them out a lot and get rid of the sap. But it doesn't look right. I'm probably still going to have to just sand everything and stain it, which is taking longer than I, I wanted. But a lot of people wonder, what do you do with the bark? Um, I am going to use this sander here. You can buy these wheels on Amazon. And you just basically go over the bark and knock all the burn off. You see it takes it right off and smooths it. So uh, that's how you get rid of that. And again, I use the grinding angle grinder with a uh, stick pad, like a Velcro hook and loop, to, to just kind of knock all the, uh, like here's how it turned out. And then I'll probably stain these just to make them look better. I don't know. I'm not sure about that. Or um, we're going to cover them with holly and garland and stuff, so I might not need it. Uh, as far as sanding, you just kind of go around in circles, but on the edges, tilt it a little bit and you get this nice smooth edge. It sands the bark out really nice. So that's a good way to do that. So here's the backside of the cookies. And what we did is put some rubber feet. And you'll see they're not all even. But what I did is I put a level on this. And I put different size feet until it was level. So this side needed a bigger foot. This was a smaller foot. But now it's perfectly level. Um, and we can attach them to the Christmas trees. Also, since these were wet cookies, it lets it dry. It gets some air in it. 
and it gives a platform for people to decorate around the tree and I believe adds a lot more perceived value because I mean it did take me probably 20 minutes to burn sand and shape this and cut it and I mean there's 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 a lot of time that goes into making these things all right so you can get a good idea of that was a tree I made and now you can get a better idea of the setup you put a nice candle with it put some garnish around it and it increases I believe the value I can sell these at um, the ones on the side are two feet high and the one in the middle is three feet high and what this does also is the candle helps kind of weigh it down I used a really large cookie so now this will stand in someone's uh, someone's place real nice I think they came out real nice let's see if I can get all three here I don't have much room but check them out so I want to show you how I was doing this and uh, again I'm sure a lot of you guys also do art and chainsaw and I need to remind you that these are kind of my first big trees I've ever made so be nice in the comments <laughs> <laughs> alright I'll see you guys